Welcome to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Joyous conversations about what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about our one reality. You have nothing to fear. You are eternal and you are perfectly loved. Knowing the truth changes everything. Now, here's Roberta. Welcome to Seek Reality. I'm Roberta Grimes and I'm so glad you're with us today. We've talked a lot here on Seek Reality about the problems of mainstream science and mainstream Christianity as they are now practiced. Although, in fact, we've talked a lot more about science, I think, because we've had more experts in the field of science. Both mainstream science and mainstream Christianity are, at this point, belief systems. They're based in long-ago beliefs that keep the belief systems frozen way back when those beliefs were first stated. Um, You can trace Christianity back to Constantine, and that's when it all started, and not much has changed since. And that's true even though we had the Protestant Reformation. Um, Of course, with science, uh, they're hopelessly stuck in the notion that things are material, which they're not. But for Christianity, there are very few experts, frankly, I've now realized as we were preparing for today, who, who are able to give us a fresh way of looking at the amazing life and the glorious truths of the Lord Jesus Christ and of the greater reality to which we, for which we come and for which we'll go back at death. But there are a few open-minded and free-spirited options for those who want to begin a faith walk that's closer to what we now know to be true. And one that seems especially promising is the Brazil-based but rapidly growing here faith of spiritism. Jasara Korngold is with us today for the second time. She's one of the founders and directors of the Spiritist Group of New York. She's a third-generation Spiritist from Brazil, and currently she's a General Secretary of the International Spiritist Council and President of the United States Spiritist Federation. She's the founder and president of the, president of the Spiritist Group of New York and the Spiritist Alliance for Books. She's doing a lot. She's few, fluent in four languages, Portuguese, English, French, and Spanish, And she's an international speaker, author, and translator. She also, and I think this is lovely, she works for Brazil Child Health as its main executive. And with her today is someone that's not been here before. Her name is Tanya Schwartz, and she's a vice president of the United States Spiritist Federation, concentrating in the organization of its national spiritist events. And we'll talk about one of those today. She's a leader in promoting the dissemination of spiritism in the United States, and she's also the founder and president of the Kardec Spiritualist Group of Austin, Texas, which means she's my neighbor, too. She has worked in many different areas within the spiritist center centers in Brazil, France, and also the United States. So these people know whereof they speak, and I'm very excited to have them here. Welcome, Jassara and Tanya. It's so lovely to have you with us today. Welcome. Oh, that's so nice of you, uh, Roberto. <laughs> we are so, so happy to be here, and so thank you, everyone, that are listening to us, and uh, we hope that we are going to have a great show today. I'm sure we will. Um, I, I to tell you the truth, because we, we do this once a year at this time of year to, so we can get your symposium a little bit promoted. And I had to look up again what spiritism is. It's a spiritualistic philosophy that was codified in the 19th century by, by a French educator who used the name, not his real name, Alan Kardec. It's a system of beliefs or religious practices based on communication with the spirits of the deceased through mediums, which we all love. So... You tell us from your perspective, what is spiritism? It's a, a very important, uh, I think, for us to touch this uh, first before going further, because what's, one thing that we have to think about it is that the whole spiritualistic movement started here in this country, and actually in the state that I live, <laughs> not Texas, New York, uh, yes. I live in New York City, right? So everything happened here at that time in the 1840s, 1850, that there was already so many phenomena happening at the same time that we were having a lot of free thinking building up in this country uh you know the the abolitionist ideas the women's rights ideas and with that and many of them actually were the ones that were uh, 
fomenting, so to say, uh, more spiritualistic ideas as well. Uh, there was uh, so many things that, that were contributing for people to start paying a bit more of attention to the um, spiritual reality. And uh, we will be talking further about that. But even, you know, the things about the civil war, so many deaths happening in this country and uh, people losing their loved ones, mother losing their, 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 their sons that would go to, to, to the war. So there were the, 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 the whole atmosphere was really inviting for this phenomena to happen and for people to be open and even to receive some sort of consolation through that. So with everything that started happening here and all the communications through very various forms and mediums popping up uh, all over this country, uh, it was not uh, unexpected that all this would call the attention of Europe especially and it was actually what happened one of the 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 boat transportation the ship that was leaving here and going to europe uh was taking with them as well th this practice of the turning tables and it were arrived in france and people started using that, using these techniques that were the, the, being developed here in the U.S. Uh, up to the point that this scholar, uh, his name was Hippolyte uh, Leon Denisar Vivaio. And, <laughs> right. and after, yeah, he, he thank God. I didn't, even, he, I didn't even try to say it. Yeah, but you know, right. Kar Karnik is a good solid short name. <laughs> yes, That's yes, good. I, I think it was, you know, well thought that, uh, you know, they decided to to just use a pen name, Alan, Alan uh -huh. Kardec. So it's it's really international, even for us Brazilian, it's very, very easy to pronounce. And uh, he said, listen, you're, you're trying to convince me that a table can reply in an intelligent way to my questions. There must be something else. And, and, and it was when uh, he started uh, to, to build a, a more solid a structure and a spiritism came about as being a byproduct of what was happening here. And that was much more just in the field of uh, the phenomenology versus, okay, paying attention to all the phenomena that was happening, but at the same time, uh, also trying to understand what is behind all that. Why all of a sudden, you know, you know, if spirits are talking to people all over the world, what do they have to say? Why now? What well, is what, their message? That, that's yes. a very interesting question, why now? Because it actually did start happening all over the world around the middle of the 19th century. But people are wondering, who the heck is Alan Kardec? Why, why was he important? What was what what he was channeling someone, right? Someone who was uh, or maybe more than one person, and there were several mediums involved. Tell that story. Well, not not really. In fact, he himself was not a medium or what we call an ostensive medium, because to a certain point, we are I mean, it is our understanding from spiritism that we are all mediums, that we all have, you know, even if uh, once in a blue moon, some uh, intuition, presentiment, or like uh, we will say, oh, I just dreamt with, uh, you know, a family, one that, a uh, beloved one that has deceased, that is deceased. Um, all, all those things uh, happen to all of us, uh, you know, average people. And Kardec, he was not a medium himself. But he immediately was able to surround himself with mediums that were taking that very seriously under his guidance as well. And so he started doing a, using a methodology because he was a, a scholar, a pedagogue, a, a polyglot. He, he was a brilliant mind, actually. Very smart one, you know, considering his time, member of the Academy of Science in France, uh, authors of books for, for uh, education that up to now are used in France. 
And so he started building a system. He said, how can I be sure that, you know, the invisible is communicating with me? But how can I be sure that the, 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 the answers they are giving to my question are the right one? So he started doing the following. He started getting in touch and, and, and having, you know, the, the a communication with mediums from all over. And uh, he would send to different mediums, different cities, later on, even different countries, the same question. And then he would receive the replies. And from the replies, he would try to make a match to see whether they, you know, they were uh, replying the same thing or things that are, were completely different. So he had the assistance of over a thousand mediums from almost uh, 300 different cities. Of course, when he started, it was more local, okay? But then it, it started expanding. And so this is a, a system, the methodology that is called... Um, uh, you know, the, this comparison. That's why normally we say that he's more like, you know, the one that put it all those, that code together. So we call him the codificator. But, uh, well, but okay, that, so, so, so what, 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 are, what are they teaching? What, what was taught through him or what was taught to him? I mean, is this based in Christianity? Um, what, yes. Who are the leading? It is, so this is a form of Christianity. They they yes. they revered Jesus. Okay, yeah, that was what I remembered. I just couldn't find it quickly when I went and looked for it. Maybe in a different way because uh, more than the man, we uh, we we have a so to say a reverence for the example with, in teachings that this man, yes. Jesus, brought to us. You know, yes. so as being a guide and model for us to follow. So is, uh, if we pay attention at the, the Jesus' teachings, he was more about doing yes. than actually preaching, right? So, so, so do spiritists uh, pay attention to the the Christian notion that Jesus died because God needed his death in order to forgive us for our sins that 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 teaching is that what they're talking about or is it what he actually said while he was alive uh, actually you know everything is a matter of interpretation so and when Jesus when it is believed you know in the uh, mainstream understanding is that Jesus came to remove the sins from the earth uh, but we understand that from more from the material aspect of it, saying, okay, somehow God needed someone to pay for our mistakes, and he, he, he sent the bill to Jesus, and Jesus said, okay, I will do that for my brothers and sisters. But our interpretation is more in the sense that, yes, he came to remove the sins, the errors from the world, but by teaching us yes. how, how not to do that anymore. Right. So this right. is more our interpretation that makes a, a bit more sense uh, than just, uh, you know, an angry God. Ab saying, absolutely right. And that's, that's, I think, how you differ most from spiritualism, which is a, 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 a sort of British-based um, way of looking mm -hmm. at things. I I have spoken at a number of spiritualist churches, and you know, you sing the hymns, and it's this, it's virtually the same hymns that they were singing a hundred plus years ago in mm -hmm. Christian churches. Um, it, it's really very derived from from traditional Christianity. But you're something new. You're yeah. teaching that that following the teachings of Jesus is is the most important thing. Which, mm -hmm. I, which is what has fascinated me about ever since I first learned about you all. That's what's fascinated me because that's where the world is going, where we need to start mm -hmm. following those teachings, which, frankly, there I don't know of any of the 40,000-odd Christian denominations in this country and the world which really says follow the teachings. Those are what's important. They've all got that get out of hell free card in hand. Yeah. You want this? You want this? You come to church and put money in the till. I mean, that's yeah. – and there is no – 
It turns out, in fact, as as Alan Kardec would have known, there is no get out of hell free card. There is no, no hell. You don't even need it. It's, there is no hell. And there is one very interesting thing about spiritism as well, because, you know, uh, as opposed to other, you know, religions or philosophies that sometimes is, uh, you know, uh, 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 shows or, 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 or give us concepts of, you know, everything that can be for, uh, forbidden or don't do this, don't do that. It's spiritism says you can do whatever you want to do there is nothing forbidden however you have to remember that uh, there is a law that is the law of cause and effect everything that you sense out in the world will come back to you so now it gives you all the responsibility of, uh, oh my God, what am I doing to myself, to my body, to my mind, to the world, to my neighbor, to my loved one? So you see, it's not a prohibitive, uh, you don't have a prohibitive list of things you can do or, you know, things that you should do, but you have guidance, you have indication, yes. like it's very much like the Apostle Paul once said, Everything is allowed to me, but not everything is convenient to me. So it's it's very liberated. <laughs> well, so it, it, it began, it, it he's French, but it really took off in Brazil. Is that right? Yes. You know why? Because, uh, I mean, first of all, I think God is amazing. I, 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 yes. I mean, yeah. Let, let's, just, let's just say yeah. that. I think that's kind of an important thing to I, say. God I, is I, I, amazing. I think that, you know, when the God yes. was planning that he said you know what this is a new continent uh, uh, the yeah. one that freedom freedom of speech of thought is going yes. to be built and is going to be the the uh, example for the rest of the world this is where i want the beginning of this spiritual liberation to start but there was a thing that we have to take into consideration. Transforming that into a philosophy of life, because above all, spiritism is a philosophy of life. When we talk about uh, philosophy, when we, we were talking at that time about uh, you know things that the work was, was, was going to look after, you know, uh, look at uh, and uh, it had to be France, where it was the credo of Illuminism, you know, the, um, all the, the age of enlightenment, all yes. the great philosophers. So the building, the structure of this philosophy, uh, it was done there. But then, unfortunately, we had three major, uh, very big wars in Europe, starting with the one in 1870 between France and Prussia, and then followed oh, the two yes. other w w world wars that led people, even nowadays, to be very skeptical, uh, many of them, unfortunately, atheist. And so uh, the whole... Uh, idea had to move to a different country to to be spread in a way where we had at that point in brazil um brazil is the land of everyone all nationalities uh there was a a few years back uh, an article in, uh, in the new york times that the title of the article was the following. Um, everyone, uh, in the future, everyone is going to be a Brazilian. <laughs> they, were, they were talking about the, uh, the, the, the perspective of genetics because, you know, uh, <laughs> Brazilian is a soup of nationalities. And so because of that, there is a lot of... Uh, the movement in terms of equality, tolerance, and uh, building up of those more uh, emotional aspects of the whole philosophy, and and it was there that it could it it, it grew, and not to mention that at that time it was also a, a country that was was not involved with. Uh, 
any kind of war or, or any of that. So yes. it was easier for all this spiritual, um, let's say, yeah, a spiritual movement to be uh, more taking place into there. So, and it, there were uh, fertile soil, soil, right? Yes, sorry. It was a fertile soil, a soil yeah. where was ready to to bring some new ideas and uh, accept this new philosophy and uh, this aspect of uh, immortality that we are all talking about. It, it really um, it became a part of uh, people's lives more easily there and uh, has been spreading. So, sorry. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> well, we're, I'm delighted to have you both here. I, I want people to understand, though, that even though it really, its roots are in Brazil, and Brazil, incidentally, I, I agree with you, is an extremely spiritual country. Um, the, the leading, uh, it, it appears to be now the leading communicator electronically um, with, the, with the realms where people no longer have bodies that are material. The leading communicator is Sonia Rinaldi, and she's Brazilian. She's she's the most selfless, sweet person I've ever met. And uh, I, I think that it's something it's something about the very air there that is conducive to to really to spiritual growth, to spiritual happiness, sweetness, and to the to make spirits want to be with people because they're very particular about who they associate with if what they're trying to do is communicate so you know all credit to brazil but you're here now and it's growing in the united states i, I understand oh yes it is uh it, it, it is growing faster than we anticipated in terms of uh, you know number of uh places that we already have, uh, you know, a, a, a spiritist house uh, in, in, in the different states and the, in the cities in terms of, you know, uh, um, books, materials that we already have in, 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 in English as well. And but there there is a, a long way to go. But I I think you know this country is really uh, longing for more spirituality. Yes, and that's very true. Very very true. Yes, I I remember I was here during two thousand one and uh, the twin towers uh, happened yes. and I was listening to a show on the radio and the uh, the host was saying that uh, that there, there had uh, there was a surge of uh, people looking for spirituality I thought it was so interesting that he, he, he didn't mention any religion in particular. He didn't say about religion or faith. He mentioned the word spirituality yeah so we all i think need uh, a little bit to sprinkle that a little bit more in our lives so how do spiritists worship typically i mean churches are tend to be uh you know the denomination prescribes how it happens and it, it's it's done that way i know in in spiritualist um, churches, there, there are medium readings. That's it, it's really like an old-fashioned uh, revival kind of uh, of service, except that there is um, uh, there's me, there are mediums there who give readings. Um, if you if someone is interested in exploring spiritism, what is what is a typical service like? I noticed that in Austin, you've got several um, different sounding. They don't. This doesn't sound like here are three spiritist. Uh, churches. It sounds more as if there are three different ways to kind of look at spiritism or practice it. Tell well, us about how you practice it. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, uh, here in Austin, we have the Kardec Spiritist Group of Austin. It's one example of uh, a spiritist group where, uh, in general, we have study groups, we have talks, and uh, we are always studying uh, the the teachings, you know, there is the gospel uh, yeah. according to spiritism, but with the idea 
like we said before, of working on those teachings in our everyday lives. So we are going we when we put a group together to study about it, we uh, are trying to put that in a very practical way in our lives. What is happening now? Uh, what what are we in the middle of? And so bringing the lessons really up to date and chatting. There is no uh, priest or pastor or one person uh, representing that way. We have a nonprofit organization where we have, of course, people that will be in charge, will be uh, taking care of the activities. So somebody will prepare a talk about a subject that is explained in the Spirit's book, in the Medium's book, in all the, the codification where Kardec asked the, the questions and uh, the spirits answered. So we, we have the answers about the spirituality, about the spiritual world. So we, we learn about them. That's the best tool for you to understand. That's the understanding of spiritism. Knowing what the God's laws are, knowing what uh, we need to work on in order to progress in our inner transformation, then we are able to uh, then continue uh, this uh, progression. And the way we are there as a community, helping each other, uh, we also have um, the uh, education for the kids. The kids have uh, also classes, and but not only talk about history or about facts, about uh, love and compassion and uh, how to respect each other. Yes. Uh, so those are, you know, the, the main uh, issues that we uh, will be, be teaching. And in this uh, line of thought, we also have uh, courses to learn uh, for those who are interested in learning about mediumship, uh, those who have already in them that capability of developing will be part of a separate group. We do the, the communication with the spirits and conversation with the spirits, but in a way to help each other, learn from each other. And it's not, it's a closed meeting. It's not open. And, uh, and there are other activities, charitable activities that we, we also have and we share, uh, but it is uh, more like a, a, a community, a group of people that are interested in learning and practicing and together getting to be those people, making changes changes in the world as well. Um, so so what, what you're, I, I, guess, I guess I'm trying to understand how people would find you. They would look you up uh, on the internet in their local city Mm -hmm. And it's it's spiritist, not spiritual. It's what spiritualists, yeah. but it's spiritist. It's a shorter word. And um, are they can they simply go to the service to kind of uh, come to know a little about it, or, or, or would they should they first contact the, uh, the the organization or what? How should they start to explore? Well, each group, and uh, Josada can talk about in New York, but basically, yeah, you can find uh, in our uh, United States Spiritist Federation, which is, is spiritist.us, the, the website, there is a list of the centers that are throughout the, the U.S. And the person, once finds there the contact, they can contact us, or in some cases, there will be the location and times of the meetings. But usually, they check on their website, the website of each local group. And there, they're able, there will be public meetings. The public meetings are either, like I said, studying or will be uh, talks about a certain subject. And, uh, yeah, they can go to the public meetings. Uh, or contact us, and we, you know, in each case, each uh, uh, city or or state will have a different time and different kind of uh, schedule, so they can come and and participate. Uh, we also uh, do, a, a, you know, fraternal 
assistance or, or dialogues, you know, talking to people. That's one thing that uh, in the spiritism, we are, it's big. We really believe that, uh, you know, people need, we need each other to, to learn and to grow. And uh, part of the, the uh, way of dealing with the issues that we all go through in this planet still of uh, expiations and trials, you know, we, there's a lot going on that we all need each other. And therefore, uh, we have this kind of um, support as well. So, so what are the sort of few main concepts or tenets of spiritism? And just one thing, first, uh, Roberta, it's important for us to just to point out that uh, all our services are completely free of charge. Yes. And uh, in, uh, all over the country, uh, we, 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 we have that. There is no, absolutely no charge uh, for any of the services. Of course, people that when they start attending, you know, we, we rent space, so we have expenses. So some of them will, will contribute, but it, uh, it, it, it will be whether they want or not to contribute. And normally it's just to a minimum for, you know, a renting space or, or, or things like that. Uh, it, it is very, very important for us to say as well. So the, the whole basis is much more focusing on, on the charity of spiritual charity uh, of helping to the best of our ability to to assist people, and, and in terms of the tenets, like you said, is it, is it, is very much like when and when Tanya was mentioning, the whole focus is for one to work on oneself, uh, to start start paying attention to. What kind of behaviors I'm having? What kind of emotions? What is bringing me, you know, disturbance, uh, unhappiness? And uh, how can I and uh, can I uh, improve that? But the the thing is, many people they they do not see a reason for them to do that. I mean, it's if you're 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 a bit older, you say, "Oh, it's I'm I'm too late in the game. What is going to change?" But then we say, "Listen, you are an immortal spirit. <laughs> it's never yes. too There's late plenty in the of game. time. Yes, there's because, plenty of time. Right. That's the danger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, because sometimes people, uh, knowing that, they will try to procrastinate. You know how human nature. Well, that, that's uh, why. That's why the uh, the earliest councils removed the fundamental concept, which is reincarnation. We we come mm -hmm. here repeatedly. There's no question about that. But they, yeah. but they but they removed it. They tried to remove all of it from the gospels, even though Jesus did teach it. Because yeah. they thought if, if you knew you could keep coming back, you wouldn't try as hard. I mean, what a yeah. stupid thing that is. Think about yeah. that. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so, wait, wait, what sorry. is the main message that, that, spirit, that spiritists, you know, what's the, the, the uh, elevator pitch, as they say? The, how would you quickly put into a couple sentences what it is spiritism is all about? Are you looking for happiness? <laughs> Go ahead, Tanya. <laughs> okay, let me let me give you a, a little a, a few points there to think about. Okay, uh, so we believe that God created everything and everyone, and we were all created the same with the potential of per, to get to perfection, a relative perfection, because we're not going to become gods, right? So only God is supreme perfection. But we can achieve perfection or become pure spirits, let's say, through reincarnation. So there is no way we, we don't think of reincarnation because it is the means that God gave us. Yes, that's to, exactly right. Yep. Matter, right? Mm -hmm. To put in practice what we learn. So we we go back and forth, uh, meaning our origin is the spiritual world. So we are spirits. We are immortal spirits. And uh, every time we are in, uh, in, in our bodies, that means it's like an episode of a long soap opera, right? We yeah. are here learning a bunch of things that we, we never regress. We always go forward because the law of progress. But we can 
get stuck in a lie. Like you're saying, Roberta, you know, for some people, believing in reincarnation might be, oh gosh, then you're going to be stuck there because we're, we don't have any motivation to keep go faster forward. But that's when we see the providence taking care of us. And like a, a parent, you know, sometimes things happen in a way, look at this pandemic pushing us, you know, uh, it's time for us to move forward. We cannot just stay where we are. We need to look in what we need to learn and, and keep moving. So, uh, and then we, uh, the way we do that, that's why study, understanding, having the information is so important because we need to know what these laws, what are God's laws? What is the expectation for us to, uh, I cannot transform myself if I don't have a parameter. So Jesus is the, the model in the sense that he came, he showed us, I you can do what I'm doing and more. So that's how you do. That's how you forgive. That's how you act. Uh, that's the right thing to do. And so this is the the, the journey we need the, to to uh, pick and find using our free will to do the right things. And also, if we are spirits, eh, as we we believe we are, uh, how come I die? I of course, I want to communicate to the ones I love. So communication with the spirit is no nothing else than just being and continuing and being part of our lives. We want to be able to have news about them, what is going on. And the ones, once they are in the spirituality, or we will be sometime, uh, we... Are not we don't become saints, we don't change, but we continue our evolution. And therefore, we have to be very aware of the kind of communications that we get from spirits, because uh, spirits are just like us, except without the flesh. That's and true. And that's, that's going to be unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, you know, we need to be... We, we need to make sure, um, this is why it's it's a science and an art together, um, communicating through through mediums. But we need to talk about the symposium. This, the, you're yeah. going to have the 15th, right, U.S. Can Spiritist Symposium. I just symposium. say something first, Roberta. Uh, uh, and one thing, because I, you, you, when you mentioned about the, the, the pitch, what would be the pitch, you, you see, the thing is, it, it works so much on a personal level that uh, no pitch is going to work if the person is not uh, somehow feeling uh, the, the call, so to say, the, the urge to go after something more. It comes, it comes to a point that each and every one of us will come up with the question, you know, I should be okay in life. Everything is working, you know, okay. Not It doesn't need to be peachy, all good. But, but there is something missing. My soul is thirsty for something more. Because every time we, we try, uh, uh, of course, we have to advertise, listen, we do exist and in case you you come across this this you know this this emptiness of the soul or this uh, you know something that you feel that is missing, we are here to help you to guide you through that. Uh, and so it's it's more about this than actually us going after people, trying to you know to convert people because with time we ha we we realize that this is not how it happens. People can come and say, "Oh, how wonderful, how interesting," but it's not for me. Well, it, it yeah, I think that that's part of the shopping that people are doing now. Yeah. I mean, but we're, <laughs> we're, where where am I going to get the most? But but we're we've coming we're coming to the end of our time. Yeah. Um, just very quickly, there 
there is going to be a symposium, and it's what are the dates of it? And it's online, so uh, and I'll give you the link so you can very easily find it. What are the dates now of the symposium? It's in June, right? Yeah, it's June fifth and sixth, and uh, it's going to be from uh, both days from two p.m. until five thirty p.m. Eastern time. So here in Austin, one to four thirty p.m. Okay. okay. Okay, and and it's going to be on mediums, right? Mediums and mediumship. Yes. It's in celebration of the 160th anniversary of the mediums book, that which Kardec wrote, right? Yes, that's okay. the second book of the codification. So uh, this is, I think, if if someone wants to kind of get your feet wet and what is Spiritism and. And, you know, also, if you're interested in mediumship, it, it, I was looking at the list of, of uh, events. It looks like something that people would really learn a lot from. Um, and it's inexpensive, right? Well, this is going to be virtual. So it's uh, no, there's no, no money involved, except for those who would love to donate and help us continue the work of translations and help us continue the work in uh, that that's wonderful so it's love yeah. offering everyone if you can't pay anything yeah. you can just come anyway and mm -hmm. if the the link will be in the materials and they do this every year so it will it be available at, if someone's listening after the those dates will it be available to them yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay so so this is something that we, if, if you're hearing this later on, you're saying, shoot, I missed it. Well, you didn't miss it. All you need to do is go to the the um, uh, Spiritist Symposium website. And again, in, it'll, the link will be uh, below in the materials about this. This program, thank you so much. You both are balls of fire. My goodness, you really <laughs> are, are inspired by what you do. And you, you've been Spiritist all your life or most of your lives. Oh, yes. Yeah. I, I've been in spirit since I, I was seven years old when I decided that I, I didn't like what I, I heard uh, from a religious class in a public school that I used to go in first grade. Yes. And uh, I started asking questions. I was expelled from that classroom. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> Starting your life of crime. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then I was, uh, my mom at the time, she uh, let me, she said, well, I needed the grade from school that was uh, uh, part of the curriculum. So she said, okay, send her to whatever she wants. There were about seven or eight different religions uh, in that they were teaching. And uh, when I asked the question uh, to all of them, and there was spiritism, and they talked about several lives, reincarnation, the justice, you know, the divine justice uh, being by the law of cause and effect. I said, that's it. Now, that's it. I, yeah. I don't believe in hell. I couldn't, that, that was my thing with the priest. I said, uh, I couldn't believe that God would send me to hell since my father, who is not perfect, would always give me more chances. So that was the main thing that he didn't like. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, we, we really, I'm sorry, we really do have to wrap it up now. I could go on all day with you, with the two of you. Um, but but um, every, everybody, this has, oh, by the way, let me just thank you first and give you both big virtual hugs because um, I, I really, every time I hear about spiritism, I resolve I'm going to learn more about it. And I'm just so busy, I never get to it. So this might be my year to come by now that I know where you are in Austin. Yeah, but, um, I'll be great. But everybody, this has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. I'm so glad you were with us today. Please never forget that you are a powerful, eternal being. You never began and you never will end. And when you really get what that means, boy, it does change everything in your life for the better. Next week, our guests will be Mikey and Carol Morgan. They'll be here with the, for the 13th time. Other than Jesus, who's in a class by himself, he entered a human mother from the highest aspect of the Godhead itself. But other than him, I think Mikey may well be the most spiritually advanced being who ever has chosen to incarnate on Earth. It's a very special case. And we here at Seek Reality are blessed to have him as our friend and regular contributor. My goodness, he is amazing. And there are all those past episodes. All of them are, are just jewels. 
Mikey last incarnated in the 1600s. He has evolved to what we think of as the upper part of the sixth level, so he's very near the source now, and he may soon join the source. Like so many of the most elevated beings, Mikey had become very concerned about the... We are, we are by the way, the talk of the town up north uh, among the people that used to be in bodies because we are so... We have so debased ourselves energetically. And Mikey wanted to help, so he chose to incarnate after almost 400 years and um, spend just 20 years here So just so he could get the culture, you know, be a kid, and then he could communicate with us uh, from the sixth level as in a modern American 20-year-old. That's what he is. And it is a hoot. His book is fabulous. It's Flying High in Spirit by Mikey and Carol Morgan. And uh, whenever he answers questions, he answers with the wisdom that's right below the Godhead. He knows so much, and yet he, he talks a modern American. It's, it's, it's quite a remarkable situation. I have heard him answer hundreds and hundreds of questions, and he has never, in my experience, he has never made a mistake. So he will have new questions to answer for us next week, and this is someone who really knows what he's talking about. Um, he, he, in fact, he knows, I have, I'm convinced now, he knows a lot more than I have ever learned, so I, teach, I consider him my most important teacher on earth. Join us next week because this is something which is rare and wonderful, and I believe they're going to be quite famous before long. I think there's a plan here, and I just like being a little part of the process. This week we've been talking about spiritism. Once a year we do this, sometimes twice a year actually. Jasera Korngold has been with us for the second time and Tanya Schwartz for the first time. They're leaders of the spiritist faith in the United States. And as I say, we're probably going to talk about this now every year. They, if you go to spiritistsymposium.org, you can learn about their online 2021 symposium, which will be June 5th and 6th in the afternoons. Not a big commitment, and it's free. Free is always an excellent price. So you can go there for more information about this the symposium. If you want to learn more about spiritism, the website is spiritist.us. Again, it'll be in the in the notes. It's a very fast-growing spiritual movement in Brazil. It's gr growing fast in the United States, too. And I see it as a way to, to enter a less fear-based, much more joyous uh, a kind of Christianity, um, which, is, which is modern and uh, not as hidebound in, in um, what inevitably happens. With religions, they become stuck in the past. But this one is not. This one is quite modern. So um, anyway, try, check, if, if it interests you, check it out. My own nonfiction books, as you know, are Liberating Jesus, My Thomas, The Fun of Dying, The Fun of Staying in Touch, The Fun of Growing Forever, and so on, including a children's book. They're all available on uh, Amazon.com, and they're also available if you order them uh, through bookstores. They're, all the adult books are available as audiobooks as well. And if you want to talk about anything at all, you know, just come to RobertaGrimes.com and contact me through, me through the green contact block there. I, it comes to me as an email, and I answer all those emails. Sometimes it takes a few days, but I do do it. I do get it done. Past episodes of Seek Reality are available on webtalkradio.net, realrevolutionradio.com, iTunes, iHeart, and just about everywhere else you can find um, uh, podcasts. And in addition, there is a, a, a podcast uh, app in the iTunes App Store that's free that, that will allow you to just get the, the new um, new episodes every week automatically. And meanwhile, this has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Please enjoy, please make the most of this coming week in our one reality, knowing that you are a powerful, eternal being, and you in particular are infinitely loved. You've been listening to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Roberta blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Join us every week as we explore what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about the one reality we all share. Knowing the truth changes everything.